Well, good morning, Grace Point. Thank you for joining us on this second Sunday of 2021 on Sunday, January 10th. May God bless you today and richly bless you today as we worship together. I want to call our attention to Psalm 90, where it reads, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Let's celebrate, let's praise and worship today as Pastor Emily leads us. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Sing our raise the hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Praise 
Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now in us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. God with morning's breaking light. Praise Him through darkness of the night. Praise Him with every breath of life. pray together this morning. Father, thank you for this time we have together to worship you and to uh, be in your presence all in our different places. And although we are not in the same room, you are the same God who is with us and everywhere we are. Be with this time of worship, be with Pastor, be with Emily, and be with this this new year that we are entering in. We're just a few days uh, into it now. But God, thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing Thank you for the blessings that you have put upon this church. And although some are dealing with illness and still dealing with all of this that we are going through, be with them and touch them and guide them. And as we go into this new year, bless us as you've blessed us um, before. And for those who would like to give, allow them to trust you with what they want to give and uh, what you have for them in their, in their life and what they want to do for this ministry and this church. Be with them there. Be with all of us as we worship in your name. Amen. There is a promise that points beyond my failure. There is a sin to silence all my fears Even the worst of my mistakes Are miracles in the making Are miracles in the making By your strength touch I
praise God. What a beautiful, beautiful worship song you have spoken, and it is so. Um, still reminds me back of the Mandalorian series we did. I have spoken, and it is so. Praise be to God. Just want to remind you um, that um, tomorrow, Monday, we will be uh, back again to our community prayer time, 7 o'clock online, and that's through the app Zoom. And uh, if you want to be a part of that, uh, you do the same thing as you would if you want to be a part of our virtual Bible study on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. also through Zoom, Bible study with me and uh, leading that on Thursday nights. You go to our app, you go to our church website, and uh, you'll be able to uh, find a place there where you uh, would uh, request uh, to be a part of those studies and prayer time on Monday night, study on Thursday night. And uh, we send you an email on that particular day, and you get the invitation and the link to come to the prayer time on Monday nights and the uh, Bible study on Thursday night. So um, do that. If you've already done that, no need to go back and do it again. Just one time, and you'll be getting those emails. Look forward to seeing you online uh, tomorrow night for prayer, Thursday night for Bible study. Our plan right now is to uh, come back for an uh, in-person gathering for worship corporately and also, of course, continuing to be online. And uh, you'll see an email go out later this week. Uh, usually Fridays is our emails for the church, and you'll have an update there Friday of, uh, of our plan for next Sunday, January 17th. So uh, we're praying for our people. We, we have had over the last two or three weeks, a number of our people uh, who have been dealing with COVID and uh, some have been hospitalized with, uh, with uh, some, some things going on there. And so uh, we think of them and pray for them today and we pray for your safety uh, as well. And so uh, a lot of people in our community these days are, are battling what's, what's going on and what has been gripping our our world over, over, over the last uh, 10, 10 months to, to nearly a year now. So thank you for your patience and understanding. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. We're thankful that you have gathered with us. Just want to remind you that um, if you haven't used our app yet, I want to encourage you again, uh, Grace Point Nazarene Church. And in that app, you can uh, find a place to give and um, You'll see on the bottom there, give, and it will take you to push pay. And it's so easy to follow. You can do a reoccurring gift, one-time gift there. And so uh, look at that. If you have any questions, make sure you call the church office uh, between the hours of 9 and 3, 9 a.m., 3 p.m. during the week. And we'd be glad to answer and help you out with that. So uh, thank you for your ongoing help. And uh, we will uh, on January 24th and January 31st, on those Sundays, we will receive any slightly used new uh, jackets, coats, gloves, scarves, hats, blankets uh, to keep folks warm in this winter. And uh, we distribute those out through the Edge Church of the Nazarene and through our local law enforcement also. So thank you. It's become a yearly thing that we do in January, and we've had to push it back a little bit. If you're not able to come join us in worship during those weeks, uh, during the week of January 25th, you can bring those items by the church office uh, in, in the morning and early afternoon, and we'll be glad to accept those things there in the office as well. So thank you. Thanks for your time for a little bit of housekeeping and letting you know what's happening here locally for your church. And let's dive into the Word of God this morning. It's Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. And, and today's message is one that I hesitate to bring, but as I was... Um, Back, back last year, planning out the first quarter of, of this year in messages and sermons for this time, um, it, it just kind of gripped me that early on in the year, I, I should um, designate a, a message about prayer. Uh, it, it seems so basic. Um, it, it seems so um, cliche that, you know, Christians pray, Christians read the Word of God. And it's not one of those messages that's, that's going to put you on a guilt trip if you don't do it enough, because all of us, we should feel like we don't do it enough. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, some, some, some aspects of prayer and hopefully some things that will also, later on in the message, encourage you um, that we would be known as people of prayer and you would pray. 
And uh, I believe if it's something that's happened and what I've been hearing from some of our our people even here uh, locally is that in in the last year, their prayer life has deepened. And and I'm thankful for that. There's more things that they've been praying about, praying for, many people that they've been praying for and and upholding and lifting up to the Lord. So I just want to remind us uh, from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, Philippians 4, 6, and it just reads, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let's, let's read that again. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Bless the reading of his word today. Now, um, for for Christmas this year, I, I, I gifted my family um, a, a prayer journal that we're, we all got one, and um, we began the new year with this, and I'm looking forward to what it's going to teach us and what it's going to reveal to us about God and about ourselves. And uh, we kind of went through it uh, a few days ago, together and kind of looked at the contents and kind of looked at what the layout was and and some of the instructions about it and I'm looking forward to see what it's going to do to our family and to us as a family to us as individuals of course when we uh, spend time deliberately seeking God um, wanting to hear from him seeking him as I said, and, and to memorize Scripture and to see uh, his involvement in our life. And I, I think it will be, uh, be a tremendous thing for us, uh, a, a kind of a new take on some things. You know, we, we do a devotional as a family, but to, to give them a journal to actually write into. Uh, we've never actually given them all a, the same thing before like this. So it, it's, I'm looking forward to seeing what God's going to use with that. But, but before this Sunday is, is gone, uh, you will have another occasion to choose, and our days are full of choices, even in these days, choose between worry and prayer. Now, the whole message is not about the distinguish of, the, of both those two things, but I want you to, in your mind, determine now, determine now what you will do. Decide how now that when the crisis arises in your life, maybe you're involved in one now, you will transform the worry into prayer. If at the end of praying, If your emotions are still in turmoil, pray more. You've prayed not enough. (laughs) But by cultivating the discipline of prayer, you will discover the ability to remain calm and even quiet as you wait before the Lord. And that is a discipline that we all need to be better at. And and you're looking at someone now that, that testifies to that point. Help me better, Lord, to wait upon you. You'll, and as you wait before the Lord, you'll find relief from fear's grip that has so captured your spirit. You might be tempted to think that your prayer was ineffective or you somehow failed because your anxiety returned just as perhaps as soon as you said amen. Happens to me that way too. But I, I take persistent anxiety as, as a signal that I need to spend more time before the Father, renewing all those details of of my problems, uh, telling him uh, of how much it plagues me, sometimes even admitting that I'm afraid of what is about to happen or what I don't know is going to happen. How will I handle this situation? How will I do this? And having a deep, persistent concern for a problem is not the same as worry. Worry is choosing to fret and churn instead of turning it completely over to God. As someone I heard years ago say, worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but you get nowhere. Worry is wrestling with anxiety 
on your own rather than releasing it to God. Um, Because we are weak creatures of habit, our anxiety will quite likely return very quickly and we will have to return to prayer very quickly and release it all over again. And that's normal. In fact, if we could rid ourselves of all anxiety with the 32nd prayer, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, wouldn't make much sense. Pray without ceasing. Most people who, whom I consider to be men and women of prayer go before God because their hearts are heavy. They tell me that nothing but continual communication and conversation with God brings them relief. So if you tend to worry a lot, you need to have a better plan. Pray a lot. For such relief becomes a reality when you will have to exercise the discipline of surrender as you rely on him to solve your anxiety, your problem, and in his way and in his time. Effective results. Getting prayer includes the thought, Lord, this is your problem to fix. You take control. You let me know, Father, when, when, when you want me to, to give you myself in this father i'm gonna leave it to you and i will consider it done it's at that point your discipline in your mind not to worry not to continue seeking the answers or trying to find the solution or resolution you solve the problem by giving it to god and now your major responsibility is a tough one it's waiting (laughs) upon the Lord it's his timing I'm reminded of that every time I look at my wife Arlene Um, there was a time as you probably know some of my history that uh, that I was engaged to somebody else and and that 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 stopped that didn't happen and then it was later that I met Arlene and I and I think of those moments where God uh, had me wait and um, and when you wait upon the Lord it may seem like God's not working but he is and God always has something for you and you may not think it you may have it fixed in your mind the situation the circumstance the the resolution that you want the answer that you need but it may not be what God is is wanting to give you and sometimes we try to force things that, that shouldn't happen and, and, and force things and manipulate things. And, and the anxiety rises because we're actually taking control of it and not giving it all over to God. Start your day with prayer and continue praying off and on through the day. Some folks they tell me they pray as they drive. And, and, of course, they tell me with their eyes open. That's a good thing. Pray at work, pray before the lunch break, pray during the lunch break. I had someone tell me that they pray when they get a difficult phone call, as soon as they hang up the phone. They pray when they're disappointed by something. They pray when surprises come. Pray when you triumph. Pray in the midst of painful news. Pray without ceasing, literally. And your Heavenly Father, being touched deeply over your struggles, loves it when you call upon Him, asking for help. He does. And sometimes we feel guilty that, oh, God, I, here I am again. And He's going, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. You don't know how much I want to hear from you. He is right there, ready to step in. Prayer is classic proof that we don't master spiritual disciplines easily. Developing the discipline of prayer while breaking the habit of worry will cause great mental effort. It will take time for you to master this. It's a new way of thinking. If if that's some part of your new thinking for the new year, stay with it. Don't give up so easily. My prayer for you is that next verse from Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's what I pray, that that peace that will replace the inner churning of your heart and your mind, it will will begin to take over other parts of your life. Dallas Willard in his fine book, a classic, The the Spirit of the Disciplines, 
describes how this happened. He says, and I quote him, praying with frequency gives us the readiness to pray again as needed from moment to moment. The more we pray, the more we think to pray, and we will see the results of prayer, the responses of our Father to our requests. Our confidence in God's power spills over into other areas of our life, end quote. You know, here's one thing that maybe we're guilty of that we need to kind of put in our heart and mind to stop, and that is sometimes we substitute prayer for responsible action. And I put it like this. Um, I, I remember in school having, having a pretty big test. I can't remember exactly what class it was, but, but I, it was a Monday, and I knew the test was coming Friday. And I, I remember, you know, I was probably in middle school when this happened. And I remember praying. I remember praying about the test. All week long, I prayed about the test. And then it got to Friday, and I took the test. And I didn't do very well on the test. And, and I, even, I even tried to find some, um, I thought I may get some credit from my teacher. If I went up to him and just told him what I did all week long, I, I went up and told him, I, I said, you know, um, I kind of leaned in on the desk. I remember, and I just said, you know, um, I prayed all week for this test. I prayed that I would do good on this test, and, and I didn't, it didn't happen. And I'll never forget it. The teacher looked at me and said, maybe you should have studied. Didn't think about that, right? I thought, I pray all week, but I didn't even crack open a book. I, I, I didn't even... <laughs> I didn't even study for the test that I was asking God to help me get a good grade on. Maybe you're sitting around after Christmas here and after the new year and you're kind of thinking, I've got some weight I need to lose. And maybe you made out a matter of prayer, oh, Lord, I need to lose this weight. But you know what? There's some things that you need to do to make sure the weight comes off. Maybe exercise is a thing. I think you get what I'm talking about now. We can think about it. We can want it to happen, but there's things that we have to do. I can preach a whole series all year about prayer, but if you don't pray, we're not going to become a praying people. We're not going to become a praying church. You're not going to see God move. You're not going to see the answers to the prayers that you have prayed and you are praying. You're not going to see God's hand move in your life because you're not looking for it. Very often, God has granted us the privilege of contributing to the answer to our own prayers. And sometimes we fail to realize that. And sometimes we reduce prayer to shallow formulas. We've got to be careful in that. You know, some folks will preach and say that we we didn't demonstrate faith with a sacrifice. We weren't specific in our asking. We didn't pray with enough belief. We didn't claim promises or use the right words or have the right attitude or, or, or some would have us think that without a formula, God will not act on our behalf, that he withholds his goodness and, and until we approach him with the right ritual. That, of course, is all false. Prayer is our vital relationship with him. The faith we exercise in prayer is not in seeing specific results for specific requests, but an expression of trust and an almighty loving father who cares for us and knows better than we what we need, not what we want. But hasn't God always provided what we need? God's promises, here's some some good news about prayer now. Here's God's promises. He promises that he'll hear and answer. He is never too busy, occupied. You don't have to take a number. He never sleeps, never has his mind so occupied running the universe that he doesn't have time to hear you. Isn't that something? And yet, never forget that an answer to prayer doesn't mean that he will solve our problems the way we want them solved by the time we want them solved in. 
but he will hear our request and respond with solutions. Sometimes surprising ones. Not only to address our concerns, but deepen our faith in his wisdom and strengthen our confidence in his sovereignty. God also promises his presence. God wants good things for all of his sons and daughters. He wants to bless, but never at the expense of our holiness. He, he may choose to deny a request for, for one blessing if the refusal re, re, uh, paves the way for a greater one we don't realize and know that's coming. That's the waiting upon the Lord. That's the help in strengthening us as his sons and daughters. And you know what else God provides? He provides an inner peace. Regardless of the chaos that's going on around us. This is such a good thing for our day. Remember the outcome God promised as a result of continual prayer? This is another version of the same verse that I just read a few moments ago. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. What does the Lord provide in place of worry? A peace. A tranquility that others cannot explain, nor do we really understand it. People will look at you calm in the middle of a raging storm in the particular season of your life, maybe even now, and say, how can you possibly smile at a time like this? How can you possibly have a glowing, glorious testimony for the goodness of God in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your anxiety, in the midst of doubt and questions that are going on around you? You don't know what's going to become of this. You don't know the, the finality of all this. How do you have peace? And your answer will be, <laughs> I have no idea except to say that my hope is in the Lord. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. God is good. And God is in control. And you may say, I will be fine no matter what happens. And few thoughts can bring greater comfort. God's goal for us is intimacy with him. And sometimes the cultivation of an intimacy can get complicated. That happens when our will gets in the way of seeking his. Richard Foster put it this way. Nothing is more central to the spiritual life than prayer. For prayer ushers us into a perpetual communion with the heart of God. And there are many things to learn about this life of constant conversation with the Holy One. But we must beware of making things too complicated, like children coming to their parents, so we come to God. There is an awe to be sure, but there is also intimacy. We bring our hearts, cry to a loving father, like the mother hen who gathers her chicks under her wings, so God cares for us, protects us, comforts us. That's taken from Matthew 23, 37, and he concludes by writing, so no matter how much we study, these realities of prayer, let us forever come as children to a loving Abba, Father, who delights to give and to forgive, end quote. Our goal in prayer is direct communication with God. It's calling out to him throughout our life. He knows the details of our life. He knows what we're going through, but he wants to hear from you. And it's not to make our daily existence any easier or more enjoyable for ourselves. No, that's selfish in that. But although from a certain point of view it does, it will take place, 
But the goal can be summed up in these words. Intimacy with the Almighty. I, I've said this a lot, and, and I joke about it, but it's the truth. You know, it'll be 30 years, June 1, 30-year anniversary for Arlene and I. And, and just think, if, if we got to that altar, and, and I would have told Arlene at that altar that day, in front of those folks at Pinellas Park Church in Nazarene, outside of St. Petersburg, Florida, if I would have told her, Arlene, you know, I just don't want us to talk about a lot of things. If I have an idea, that's going to be your idea. Can you see how long that's going to last? No, the way we got to know each other was to talk to each other. We did that a lot when we were dating. You, you talk about, you, you get to know, by, know someone by talking about them and talking to them and, and hearing from them. It's communication. And it's exactly the same way with God. It's communicating with him. It's getting to know him. It's intimacy with the Almighty. He so desperately wants to hear from us. Seek that first, that intimacy with God. And I believe that you will have a relationship with God that you never thought existed or could exist. And you'll learn more about the things that you can live without that you don't need because when it gets down to it, all you need is more of him. And then he supplies every single thing you need. But my friends, pray. Pray. Ask God. Talk to him. Let him know your anxiety. Let him know your troubles. And then there's also moments for you to come and just spend moments to thank him. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace. Think about his forgiveness. Think about his love. Think about his supplying. Think about what he gives. Talk about him to him. And notice the depth of your spiritual life begin to grow. What a year you will have when that intimacy of God just deepens and widens. God will throw upon you his presence like never before because you're noticing things you never before. You're looking for things you never thought you could see. You're finding God in what we would usually call the mundane things of life. He is speaking and he's using you because you are so in tune with his spirit. You are praying without ceasing. Our God our great Heavenly Father, I thank you today. As I stand before you and stand for our people today of Grace Point, oh, how I thank you for your love for us, for your grace, for the way, God, that you continually seek after us. Oh, how you love us and how you want us, Lord, to communicate with you and speak to you about the things going on in our life the smallest details, the things that are giving our heart fits these days, things about our job, relationships, finances, children, grandchildren, health, loss, loneliness, Depression, the anxieties of these continued uncertain days. God, right now, I just pray that you would grant peace to anyone who seeks that today. Anyone who's watching today, who's hurting. God, give them your peace today. May they sense their significancy in your kingdom. 
May they know that they are a child of Almighty God. Oh, yes, Lord, may we pray more this year. Ultimately, may we spend more time with you. Thank you, God, for your care for us. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. May God anoint you today and bless you in a way you've never felt or seen in your life. Speak to him, and may he bring you peace. Praise be to God. Thank you.